what is holding you back from really pursuing your true creative goals? And how can we help you get through the barriers so that you can really step into your creativity and share what you have with the world? Put the track together, we made it, and we're really excited about how it turned out. And, you know, it kind of gives you that Latin American feel a little bit, world music. So, yeah. And welcome to Creativity is in Business. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I hope you are off to a great week. This is Monday and we are now in April month. Um, so I'm super excited to have my friend Imani here. For those who just tuned in a little backdrop, we already kind of kick-started in our little music fun because Imani's all about DJ. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here with you. What first inspired you to even get into DJ? Why DJ out of all the things? Yeah, all the things. I saw DJ Bismarcky at a club in DC back when I was in college and I really, <laughs> I really uh, love what he did. He had this specific part of his set where he played TV theme show songs and we were all singing along. It was a packed club and it was just amazing. And it was that moment that I said I wanted to be a DJ. Now at first, I thought that it wasn't really a legitimate career, but I was wrong. And so it took me a while to get the courage to go for it. But once I moved out here to Los Angeles, I decided to go for it and did it part-time along with a full-time job. And now I'm like a full-time DJ. That's awesome. And I know this background is kind of misleading. I'm actually in DC. I do not have a beach like this. So thank you all for the lovely comment that you like my beach. I like this image too. And we'll keep this for the time being. I thought maybe I'll tune into my DC, but I mean, I'll show you a little sneak peek for those who've seen it. This is my lovely home home, which I do love as well. But I think for today's occasion, we'll hang out at the beach a little bit longer, shall we? We shall. How do we have the courage to rethink about something? And I would love to learn more how you use DJ to talk about the courage of taking risks. Tell me more, what does that mean? Yeah, the courage of taking risks. I think when a DJ is up there playing songs, every time they switch from song to song to song is a risk. We don't know if the crowd's gonna respond well to it. We don't even know if we're gonna be able to mix it perfectly in scene. We don't know, we don't know anything. So it's always a risk. I mean, you're taking 250, 300 risks a night if you play a four hour set and you just don't know, but you have to kind of go for it. You can't hold back, you try new things. One of my favorite things is if you're playing a certain genre, say we're playing hip hop, and I say, okay, maybe I want to switch it up and sneak in a salsa song or sneak an old 80s rock song in there. So it's always risks. You try them, see what works, what doesn't, and you just add it to your library. Ties me to another thing I'm curious is that one of the things I know even in creativity is that it's understandable that taking risks require, you know, pushes us sometimes to be aversive, risk aversive, because it is, um, you know, you taking risks means you're doing something different and sometimes you don't know, as you said, what the crowd or audience might think in mind. So how do you make sure you don't become risk aversive and stay courageous to continue to take risks? Oh, I think you, you just have to kind of, it's just part of the game. Like it's always going to be risking. It's always a part of life. It's a part of the DJ life. And so if you don't take risks, then you're just going to become very stale and very stagnant. So that's no fun. So taking risks is fun. Sure, if it doesn't work out, it might, you know, might your pride might get hurt a lot. But if you can kind of, you know, control your ego a bit and just go for it, like you have to have fun. So let's just go for it. Even things like for now, you know, like I do live streaming, so I took a risk by doing live streaming on like a Wednesday nights. I do slow jams, like that's a risk. People might be like, what are you doing? Just play upbeat music. But you know, I like my slow jams, so I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> and I loved it because I know you've been doing some on Facebook, if I yes. correctly, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. every Wednesday, yeah. It's hard to know which feedback is a feedback that we should take versus a feedback that maybe we need to take with a grain of salt. So Usually from the audience, um, if you put another song on and people maybe stop dancing or they might take an exit or they kind of lose their energy, that's a quick signal that they aren't feeling the song. And you generally have like a core group of people that are like dancing. So if you can keep that core group of people continuing to dance and singing along, that's a good sign. So if they start to trickle out or maybe they stop or they look at you kind of funny, then you maybe say, okay, I might switch it up, but maybe not, you know? Sometimes there's someone in the back of the room and they come up and make a request or say, oh, I want you to play this song. You might not take that one too too serious, but if you pay attention to your core group of people that are dancing and see if they're continuing to move and they're like, oh, I love this song, and they react very positive to, positively to it, you keep going. And that ties, I think, to another question, which was, you know, how do you know how to pivot? It sounds like then you look for these cues 
to know when to pivot and how to adjust. Definitely, you'll see a lot of DJs out there doing live stream DJ sets all during the day, all over the world. I think the one that got the biggest response was D-Nice when he was DJing during quarantine a couple weeks ago and had like over 100,000 people on his Instagram stream, which was fantastic. And people were just coming by, even, you know, Michelle Obama, Madonna, um, Justin Timberlake, all sorts of people were coming by and dropping comments in the thread. Okay. And so that's, that's that's um that's one thing to do, and then other things is like with podcasts, just helping people maybe turn virtual events into podcasts because so much is going virtual now. I think one fun fact or quote quote we didn't share is like what your life was before DJ. Right. Yes, I used to work in a corporate space, worked for Marriott hotels for almost twenty years, worked all across the country, director of sales and marketing at a couple of hotels, general manager of a hotel, regional director of sales and marketing, and I started as a bellman. And so, you know, work my way up from the bottom. And that's what I used to do. And then I decided to kind of retire from that sort of career and pursue the DJing and the creative life 100%. Thank you for sharing that because even in your life story, I think it reflects in how you continue to pursue being a better version of who you are. <laughs> and that ties perfectly to um, a quote that I want to share as we wrap up today. Uh, May your life be like a wildflower growing freely in the beauty and joy of each day. It's a Native American proverb. proverb. And how timely is that? I think often we think that, you know, there's this box of definition of who we have to be, what it means to be somebody. And I love that even with the work of DJ, you debunk that in different ways. And with that, using that as a tool to empower many others. Um, awesome, I love it, love it. Well, thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, I love the, let's go with blue. So my favorite space at home would be my like DJ studio because I'm just at home up there. It also kind of doubles as my office. Yeah, send me a request. <laughs> There's still a few more days. <laughs>